all plants contain some form of sugar produced by the natural process of photosynthesis. But it is the sugar cane and the sugar beet that are the most important for producing commercial quantities. All these items contain some form of sugar. Sugar is a natural food. It provides almost instant energy and is an essential part of our diet. Well over half the world's sugar comes from sugar cane, which grows in a tropical climate. Sugar beet is grown in the cooler, more temperate zones. Sugar cane is normally cultivated on large estates. It is a giant perennial grass, and depending on the variety and country in which it is planted, it reaches heights of between 8 and 20 feet. The stem, which looks rather like bamboo, varies in thickness between half an inch and two inches. The stem itself is a tube of hard rind. Inside is a softer fibre, and it is this that contains the sugar. In the heart of Tanzania, the great Ruaha River irrigates the fertile Kilombero Valley, the site of a typical modern self-contained sugar estate. A few years ago, this was bush, but it has now been transformed into a flourishing expanse of cane fields. As well as sugar under company cultivation, there is a scheme for African smallholders to supply the estate with a large percentage of their requirements. The estate is virtually self-contained. It has its own factory, power plant, schools, shops and residential area. Apart from rice, sugar cane has the highest water requirement of any crop. An average rainfall of from 70 to 100 inches is required. But there are few places in Tanzania where this occurs, so it is necessary to supplement it with overhead irrigation. With water pumped from the nearby river, the plantation is almost independent of natural rainfall. Sugar cane is normally planted using cuttings selected from the existing cane. The cuttings are planted directly into the ground. It takes anything from 14 to 20 months after the cuttings have been planted before harvesting can commence. Harvesting is carried out by cutting the stems close to the surface of the soil. The leaves are then stripped off. The rootstock that remains in the ground sends up new stems or ratoons, but the plant will only remain efficient for about five years before replanting is necessary. It is essential not to leave the stalks lying in the field, otherwise loss of sugar quickly occurs. They are gathered as soon as possible after cutting and stacked ready for transport to the factory for processing. During the production season, the factory is working 24 hours a day, so enough cane must be cut to keep it in constant operation. Transport of the cane is carried out by self-loading trailers, pulled by tractors. Less labour is needed with this method, resulting in higher output. The cane is then transported to the factory for weighing and processing. Growing sugar beet is very different. It is cultivated in a wide area in the temperate zones, where it fits suitably into a system of rotation of crops. Sugar beet is a root crop and it is the root, not the leaves, which contains the sugar. The leaves are cut off and used for silage and feeding cattle. Unlike sugar cane, sugar beet is grown from seed and is an annual crop. During the spring, as on this English farm near Thetford in East Anglia, the seed is sown by a machine which also sprays the ground against weeds thereby assisting the young crop during its early growth.
When autumn arrives, the beet is ready for lifting. Modern machinery aids the farmer in harvesting sugar beet. The machine lifts the beet while cutting the leaves off the next row to be lifted. When the beet is lifted, it is deposited into an accompanying trailer. The lifted beet is stored at a point where it can conveniently be transported to the factory for processing. About eight tons of beet is needed to produce one ton of sugar. The processing of sugar beet and sugar cane is almost identical. In this instance, it is sugar cane that is arriving at a factory in Tanzania. The cane is offloaded and stacked in a shed by overhead cranes. From here, the cane can regularly be fed into the roller mills for crushing and juice extraction, as it is the juice which will eventually provide the sugar. Rotating knives cut the cane into small sections, which are then crushed, the juice being carefully separated. The crushed cane, which is now called bagasse, is waste. This is used as fuel for the boilers, which in turn generate power for the factory. The extracted juice is collected in containers, heated, and then lime is added. This helps to collect any impurities together so that they can be skimmed off as a scum. The clear juice is then pumped to vast evaporators where, when boiled under vacuum, it thickens, leaving a super-saturated solution of sugar and syrup. During the whole process, careful checks are made on progress. When ready, the liquid is transferred to crystallizers. And from there it goes into centrifugal machines, where as the speed increases, the sugar crystals are retained, while the syrup is thrown outwards. This syrup, called molasses, is used mainly in cattle feeds and the alcohol industry. When the crystals have been washed to remove any remaining traces of syrup, they are transferred to a granulator where they are dried and cooled, ready for packing and dispatch. Brown sugar is the result of less processing, but it is just as pure as the snow-white sugar crystals which are normally required for domestic use. In almost all refineries, the packing of sugar is highly mechanized, the correct amount being automatically supplied by the filling machine. Sugar can also be supplied in bulk, sometimes for shipment overseas, or in the small domestic packets we're now more used to. So, sugar is the product of two plants grown in entirely different climates. Sugar beet, a root crop grown in a temperate climate, and sugar cane, a tall grass grown in a tropical climate such as here in the West Indies, one of the most important sugar producing areas. 
One of the byproducts of refining sugar is molasses, which in turn can be used for feeding cattle and making yeast and rum. And the final product, refined sugar, can be used either white or brown. Both are just as pure and both are used as an essential ingredient in so many of the items we eat and drink every day.